Okay guys, so here we have a little LG 19 inch monitor that was used on a CCTV system. Um, the monitor does power on and everything like that. It was working up until two days ago or possibly over the weekend it failed. Um, so the customers asked me to take a look at it. Uh, I assume it could be a capacitor issue as all the symptoms point towards a bad cap or something like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to power it up, just connect it up and make sure that it is doing exactly as the customer has stated or as I noticed when I pulled it out of circuit. Uh, we've put a temporary one in so they can still work. But um, let's take a proper look at this guy on the bench and uh, see what sort of problems we find. Right, as can be seen here, uh, no matter what we do, that's all we get, a green flashing LED. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop it open and uh, check out the capacitors on the power supply and uh, see what we find. Okay guys, so here we have the power supply board of the LG monitor and I already see two caps over here which are nice and swollen. Uh, could very well be the cause of the problem. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and check all the capacitors on the board and do a full power supply test to make sure there's no other issues. And of course we'll change out these two caps and reassemble. Very common problem with um, most of these monitors is these swollen caps, uh, which are basically caps that have gone bad. So let's get in there, change those caps and check the other capacitors and uh, see what happens. common issue with these boards is uh, the capacitors go bad so we need to get these guys out of circuit over here paying attention to polarity I'm just doing it the original way getting some proper solder in there start up the desoldering tool I mean not the desoldering tool, the solder fume extractor and uh, let's start popping these capacitors out over here I'm still very old school in the sense that I like to um, make use of older type uh, sol desoldering practices uh, rather than using these newer uh, technology type tools uh, such as desoldering tools. As you all know I do have my desoldering tool but um, I tend to not really make much use of it. I might have to uh, crank up the temperature a little bit here. But I'm thinking, let's get these capacitors out and uh, take it from there. Okay, there we go, one maybe up. Um, second hole. Now these electrolytics tend to go bad quite often. Um, you can actually see this one is very badly swollen. These are 1000 microfarad 10 volts, so I should have a couple of these laying around. Um, we'll test them just now and uh, confirm that they are bad, which I um, can guarantee you they are. Uh, but um, it will also show you guys the ESR meter and the function thereof. So, let's uh, get the last cap out. The uh, lead free solder is quite a nightmare to work with. It um, generally doesn't let you desolder without a very high temperature, but um, there are workarounds, I guess, to getting it done. So um, it does get the job done, not a swollen cap. So I just want to clean up now. Um, make sure that we've got nothing unnecessary sitting on there. Should 
basically clean up these um, holes because uh, I believe firmly in doing a a good job. I don't want comebacks or anything along those lines when it comes to my workmanship or anything like that. I want to say safely that my work is excellent and my customers are always happy. So for that reason, I clean up. Um, I make sure that there's no further issues with the work and I also guarantee um, a lot of my repair work just to make sure uh, that if anything does go bad or if I've missed something then the customer still gets their satisfaction at the end of the day. Okay, so that's pretty clean. So uh, let's uh, test those capacitors and see what we get there. Alright, first things first, is there our meter with a lead shorted? And um, then we get our capacitors. Obviously, observing polarity, we're going to clip it on. Now, you're going to check the ESR of Z said capacitor 2.67 ohms. So that is way high, I can tell you off the bat, but just as an example, we're expecting probably around 0.12 ohms. So 2.8 ohms, this capacitor is definitely bad. Uh, let's just check the other one. I'm not even going to check the microfarad rating. Well, actually, I'll do that just as a matter of recourse. And this capacitor, we've got 3.3 ohms. Also, gone. So, um, yes, our meters confirmed those caps are dead. Let's have a look in the multimeter and see what microfarad rating we get. Okay, I'm not 100% sure if this meter will be able to do a thousand microfarad caps, but uh, we're going to give it a bash and see what happens. Okay. We're showing around 100 microfarads. Now, this should be a thousand microfarad capacitor. So, definitely game over. And then check the secondary one. Just gotta wait for it to cycle up. Fluke might be a bit quicker, but it um, doesn't matter. And this one we got less than 100 microfarads. We got around 60 microfarads probably. Again, way, way, way under its rating. So, those caps are definitely kaput. Finish. So, uh, let's change those out and see if we can get this monitor back up and running. First thing we need to do is we need to come down to our drawers and we need to make a selection of a appropriate size and voltage thousand mic cap. Okay, so our old caps are 1000 microfarad 10 volts and one micro 1000 microfarad 10 volts. So We've got some 16 volt caps here, appropriate size, so I'm going to go with those. A little bit of overshoot on the voltage, but that's fine as long as your microfarad rating is good. So we're going to change these out, and uh, then we're going to test the power supply, and uh, see if it's any good, or if it's improved, or whatever the case may be. So these are 1000 microfarad 16 volt replacement capacitors. Uh, these are 105 degrees Celsius rated caps, so they're decent quality. Um, they will, I'm sure, do a pretty good job. And just to check that there's nothing wrong with my meter, I'm going to just check the microfarad rating on these caps on, on this meter and see what we get. Takes a while, but we got 1,112 microfarads. Um, it's settling on 1,106 microfarads in these caps. So clearly, my meter is working fine, which I knew, but I just wanted to do that as a matter of recourse. And um, we're going to get these caps in, and then check power supply rail voltages and make sure everything's good. So observe polarity again. We've got a negative on the outer edge over there. Uh, some boards are marked such as these, some aren't. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our first capacitor in there. Okay, 
what I like to do is just give it a bit of a kink so that it holds in place. Tack the first leg in place. And then straighten up the capacitor because I'm fussy about my workmanship. It's got to be right, 100%. Okay, so cap's in place. We can go ahead and solder the other leg in now. Like I said, polarity is very important with these sort of things. You've got to get the polarity right, otherwise you're going to have a problem. Um, and of course we need to trim these excess leads over here. Okay, so can cap. We have some blockages in the capacitor holes over there, which I've just cleared out. And then again here we've got our second cap, again observing polarity, pop our cap in, and just do a bit of the splits, solder the first leg into place just to hold it, tack it in properly, there we go, second leg, to the first leg, check the solder joints, now these bigger terminals always take a little bit more soldering effort, and then we can clip off the excess um, lead again, now technically I should have 2000 microfarads across those points. So again, I'm not sure if this specific meter will go that high, uh, if not, I can always use one of the others. But I'm going to check that we have our 2000 microfarads capacitance across those two capacitors, because they are in parallel. Just waiting for it to charge up. Okay. We actually have substantially more, but that's because of some other capacitors that are in the circuit. So we're sitting with 3,700 microfarads, so the rail's looking pretty good. Now we need to power up this voltage rail, and uh, let's see what happens uh, when we power up the power supply and make sure we get all our voltages that we're expecting um, out of this unit over here. Now if I have a look, here we have ground on-off which is the blue wire, brightness which is the green wire, ground VCC 5 volts, VCC 5 volts pin 1 and 2, and yes pin 1 and 2 are merged on the outside over there. So by powering this thing up we should actually get uh, our voltages uh, as expected. Guys, this is the part where it takes a little bit more care, switch mode power supplies can be pretty dangerous. Um, you can get quite a nasty shock from these things. Especially if you start playing by the high voltage section, all these large capacitors over here carrying 400 volts out. So what we need to do is when we power up, also bearing in mind, before I do so, sometimes these actual heat sinks are hot. Uh, the only safe portion of this board, theoretically, is this side over here. All of this over here is mains potential or higher DC voltage. So we want to stay clear of this. Um, including these heat sinks because if you have a look these heat sinks are actually directly on the voltage line so we're going to stay off, off those and we're just going to check the actual DC point voltages on the output of this power supply over here so we're going to go ahead and do this with care first step, get our leads ready knock it down to DC volts hold the board because I don't know what's hot and what's not Alternatively, unplug, plug it into the board. And we can give ourselves a bit more room here to work. And then we can plug back in. Again, being careful. Right, so we're going to go ahead now with our voltmeter, or multimeter. And again, pin 6 ground, check it. 5 volts. Boom! We got 5.132 volts. 
that would be ground. Green is, what did I say? Brightness, okay. Blue is power on. Okay, so we've got our 5 volts over here, uh, which is our standby 5 volts. Uh, probably runs 90% of the monitor. And, uh, yep, that's looking good. Let's get it back into the monitor and see what happens. Now, so reassembly of the monitor in the reverse order that you took it apart. Uh, quite a simple procedure. Okay, so we've got our monitor back together. What we're going to do now is we're going to pop power in there. We're just going to test and see what actually happens. Alright, let's power up. Ah, we have backlight, we have the LG display coming on. We have solid green lights, so just for check signal cable, monitors back up and functioning. Like I said, a very simple repair, very common uh, issue with Samsung, LG, or pretty much TVs, monitors, or anything like that. So, yeah, for those of you who are wanting to fix your own monitors, there's a simple way to check the capacitors. I'm sure there's hundreds of videos of this on YouTube already. I just thought I'd make one, and maybe mine's different. Uh, I don't know, but uh, yeah, very common fix. I do a lot of these and uh, happy customers at the end of the day. So let's get this monitor final checkup done. Now for those of you that uh, uh, don't know too much about monitors, um, the few things that I did behind the scenes which you're not seeing in this video are I checked all the capacitors with the ESR meter uh, just to ensure that the other capacitors were good. I found all of them were well within their spec. Um, the two capacitors that were replaced are actually the main power rail capacitors for the 5 volt power rail. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what caused the monitor to die. Um, a few of the other things that uh, need to be checked, which were checked on the monitor, was I used an oscilloscope to check the power rails for Ripple, uh, to check the various power signals, uh, everything like that. So the monitor checked out 100%, has been reinstalled back at the customer's premises and they are happy. So yeah guys, that's pretty much it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, I'll be making a lot more close-up videos once I get some more camera equipment um, as to the actual repairs and maintenance of these things so you can get a close-up view of me doing the repair work. Thanks for watching guys. Until next time, take care.